This is the Insomniacs Anonymous Podcast, the most trusted name in making you rage quit. Today on the podcast, we go over some upcoming changes to our forums, which you can visit in the description. We talk about the indie game Mr. President and the fun of tackling a presidential candidate. Dude tortures Shro briefly by talking a little about Five Nights at Freddy's sister location. A demo of Pokemon Sun and Moon is live on the 3DS shop. Red Dead Redemption 2 is being teased, and Adventure Quest is becoming a multi-platform MMORPG in 3D. Stick around, there's a lot to discuss. Hello and welcome to the Insomniacs Anonymous Podcast. This is episode 23, plus 10, minus 10, plus 5, minus 5, because I don't feel like doing actual math today. It is 23. It is 23. Well, yeah, I actually... Never mind. Anyway, uh, October 18th. Still Tuesday. Shro slept in by accident again, but it's still Tuesday. Which is why he's doing the intro. But we should probably start taking turns. We need a better system on I think we're supposed to be taking to... turns we on need a... this, but... It... <laughs> yeah, we need a better system on how to decide this. Yeah, we also need to glue a taser to Shro's phone. So yes. that when it when it goes off, yeah. it shocks you. I actually I developed that system back in early high, maybe even middle school. Uh, the idea that my my watch, um, I'd have two electrodes on the back of it, and it it would zap me if I let the alarm go too long. And I'm like, I don't have enough space on my in my watch to add anything to it i would have to build my own watch or like a weird little attachment for it yeah, a weird little attachment might work yeah i have like a little extra so, cup above under the watch part and then you have the electrodes underneath it and then it zaps you whenever you're letting it go for too long yep and then on a related note i i almost did something to my actual alarm clock like that but again, decided not to go with any crazy electronics, and all I did was actually take thumbtacks and turn them pointy side up over the uh, snooze button. Oh, that sounds like a terrible idea. It it was, except that it wasn't, because you know what my sleep addled body managed to do. Um, press the snooze button, and then go back to sleep. My my fucking brain because I didn't put that many thumbtacks on it, figured out in complete sleep mode how to... How to avoid stopping yourself? Through, oh. Yeah, push the button in between the thumbtacks. <laughs> I never actually ended up stabbing myself on the stupid thing unless I was actually awake and trying to push the button for some other reason. God damn it, Shro. I'm like, what the fucking hell? So yeah, that didn't last very long, because I'm like, how did I... What? <laughs> there are no holes in my hands, but the alarm is off. How did this happen? <laughs> Your sleepy self is too sassy and clever for that. Pretty much. So yeah, this time I think it was just that my, my phone... Like, I have one of those apps that is supposed to help you wake up appropriately. That does um, not work, does it? <laughs> actually, it does pretty well, um, but it, I the phone was close to the pillow with the speaker facing into the bed, and I feel like uh, that caused the problem that it was just not loud enough. Battery was also dying, which shouldn't technically affect it, but uh, I don't know. It wouldn't be but anyways, going for very yeah. long, but yeah. Sure, I might need to get into the advanced technology stage and you say you know what we have bluetooth and smartphone apps now i can just program it to say hmm turn bluetooth device on if not turned off in five minutes and bluetooth device just happens to be a taser <laughs> well good luck with yay that. 21st century <laughs> eh, that's, that is pretty cool but still, good luck with that. Yeah. Speaking of things in the 21st century and new things, this is a horrible segue, but 
lots of games are turning old now. Yep. Including, and granted, my sources are Reddit right here, so um, I'm not entirely certain how much of this is true. But um, the game Bully oh, is yeah. uh, turning 10, I believe. And a few people are disputing the um, birthday of Zelda and or Link, depending on how you want to look at those games. And also, in a related note, Halloween Zelda. Um, this one requires pictures, so maybe we can slam these into... Uh, the description on our podcast, but we have Friday the oh, 13th wow. Halloween pictures. Okay, and... that, what, that second one was messed up. Um, yeah, that one's a little weird. Maybe not that one. Yeah, I, I like the first one you linked, though. That is adorable with the Chihuahua and the I Ocarina. Say, what actually, I'm trying to remember what the breed is for that dog. But it is basically a really white... It could be a long-haired chihuahua. A fluffers? Yeah. White, long-haired chihuahua with his very well, they own... Can, they can her see very it. Own they, they'll be chihuahua. able to see it. I'll link it. True. You gotta just put it in the time card of the video, I think. I'm trying to figure out what the little card in front of said puppy dog is. can't tell. No, I quest think that's scroll just... or well no they don't have quest scrolls in Zelda. I don't know. Also, a can map. I just point out that yeah, maybe, it might yeah. be a map. Anyway, sorry. Um no, the tiniest master sword you've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. And since we're talking about pictures that I've linked in chat, we have what I believe is an Assassin's Creed game where somebody has modded a character, probably their character, to have um, the Gurren Lagann cloak and glasses. So that's kind of amusing. Um, somebody that spent way too much time in Terraria again, um, enough to make our own Victor Von Groove blush. And another puppers related pick because somebody apparently has a big enough 3D printer to print pieces of body armor from Fallout. Um, I almost said Cult Mechanus, but that's Warhammer 40k. Um, the Brotherhood of Steel body armor. Yeah, and I can't tell where the seams are, which is why I think that the pieces are absolutely huge. There may or may not be seams, but there appears to be a tiny pug puppy in the background of this picture, staring in disbelief at what is in the middle of his hallway. And I can't blame the poor little puppers. <laughs> it is worth noting that this puppy is for scale. Probably. Possibly, but the puppy is in a very different depth of field yeah. of the picture. So, puppers for scale is done incorrectly. I know, but it was adorable and I wanted to... Just... I mean, it's still adorable. Yeah, Very, yeah it still is. <laughs> Holy what shit. we really need, though, is puppers being held by the body armor and or sitting on the shoulder of it. Oh, yeah. So, yep. Yeah. You probably have, like, a puppy seat for that. Or a puppy Golden strap. Puppy seat. Anyway. Oh, what else do we got today? Uh, so yeah, random bullshit we found as we were looking at news. Um, yep, no, Shro is still waking up. Can't come up with any good segues for right now, so I'm just gonna shoot for it. Um, Pokemon Sun and Moon, demo time. Tell me more. Uh, I only know that it there's a Pokemon Sun and Moon demo on the 3DS shop. I haven't played it yet. I literally just learned about it today on Twitter. So if you have a 3DS and would like to play Pokemon Sun and Moon, give that demo a shot and see what you think. Apparently there was a leak 
of the entire Pokedex in the demo, though. So I don't know if you... I don't know if that's still a thing or if it got patched. So download it if you can. See if it hasn't been patched or if they even can patch it. They probably can. Like, I probably should just fire up my 3DS and download that now and then, like, talk about it as, like, as I'm playing it. But, eh. That'd be weird. Let's play podcast of a thing you can't see. see. <laughs> what kind of weird Frankenstein podcast would that be? We're going to do a let's had... play. You can't actually see my screen. It's a mystery. I'm going to telecast it to you. I've done Except that for, like, tabletop have a TV. games. I've been podcasts for tabletop games. I'm sure it'd work too. I mean, I'm yeah. I guess it would work, but it'd be weird know. though, because it is a very See, visual thing. That's a weird concept to me already, though. Considering uh, you said that they could patch the 3DS game, and I'm like, wait a minute, patching yeah, it's a handheld, download, so you can patching just... handheld games. That's a concept. Mm. Well, it's not a cartridge thing, and even then they've figured out how to patch those. So, yeah, time right. to change in. Again, welcome to the 21st century. Shro hasn't had a modern console or handheld aside from his smartphone since the GameCube. Have you? Oh, okay. I was thinking if you had a Wii, then there were mods for, the, for Smash Brothers Brawl where... It would read software from the SD card. So it was probably made to take patches in a similar way. It nope, checks the no SD Wii. card and stuff. Though, there was a Wii. Uh, I went to the thrift store with my buddy the other day. And I was there for a headband because I apparently don't look like a hippie enough. No, I'm trying to train my bangs to not be in the middle of my eyeball so headband <laughs> and as we were there we were looking at a bunch of bullshit we found a Wii complete with controllers and adapters for $15 Why didn't you buy it I didn't buy it because I have nowhere to put it oh okay um my console entertainment cabinet TV setup is A, connected to a TV that is so old that it is a CRT. Though I think it would still function. And B, all of that is currently inaccessible right now because there is a table and a large amount of boxes in front of it in my basement with nowhere to move said table and or boxes. And he didn't buy it because I don't know why he manages to irrationalize these things or as he put it he managed to rationalize not buying a game console that he didn't think he would play mm. to which I chided him all the way to our next destination well the Wii is I'm kind a of bad old. friend well the Wii is kind of old and even the Wii U is starting to die out it's about yeah. that NX project or whatever so he does have a casual gaming girlfriend, and I feel like she probably would have enjoyed it more than him, but who knows. We also found a, um, a Cabela's branded uh, light gun, which looked like a freaking sniper rifle. Uh, uh -huh. And it, it was clearly for the PlayStation, because it had like controller buttons on the back of it, which was rather interesting. It had like two or three buttons and an analog stick. I'm like, this is pretty freaking intense. That was that was something I, I kind of wanted just as kind of like a, this is fucking cool. I miss light gun games. I, the consoles, one of the ones I have is an old original Nintendo Entertainment System. And oh I God. do, in fact, have a light gun for it with Duck Hunt. Uh, uh. Two copies of Duck Hunt, actually. Why two? Because uh, one was a uh, double box game. Uh, it was a okay. cartridge that had two games in it. And I believe it actually came with the light gun. Oh, wait, no, I have this backwards. It came with Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, and that is my copy of Duck Hunt. 
Uh, okay. I also have a copy of Straight Up Super Mario Brothers. So I have two copies uh, okay. of those. Only one copy of Duck Hunt, but it's in the dual game thing. Super Mario Hunt and then Duck Hunt. So, yeah. Or Super I do Mario. actually have that. That's cool. My last, my last light gun was for the Wii, and it was... Uh, I'm surprised at this particular design of the controller, because you slipped it on the top, like, where the barrel would be. You slipped the Wiimote where the barrel would be, and then you just had, like, the gun handle below. And it was for uh, huh. I mean, House I guess of the Dead 2 sense. and 3, and it was awesome. Nice. The acting is still horrible. I believe it. Mm. At least in 2. <laughs> 3 really did a lot better. And I'm very Can happy about that. I point out that you said my last light gun? My last light gun game, sorry. I no, It was also I, my I, last light gun, because that was the I, only other one fine. I had. I, I, I'm just amused by the idea that it sounds like we're two old men <laughs> on, on our porch. That gun was, was a pistol. Reminiscing about the old days. <laughs> we're both in our mid-20s. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the old days of House of the Dead. And oh, Pac-Man God. and the, the DDR. Scary part is that gaming has moved so fast that, you know, we almost have rights to that. Like, not as much okay. as any of my, you know, friends that are 30, 35 plus who have been through the arcade era. But, uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Getting there. A little bit. A lot of kids these days don't know era before smartphones and consoles that were connected to the internet. But they will one day, I'm sure. I definitely went back to the NES days, and I still miss the arcades. Yeah. And they're still around, thankfully, in the form of Dave and & Buster's and Chuck E. Cheese and other places like that. God, I haven't been to Chuck E. Cheese in probably a decade. Same Maybe here, more. and I have never been to a Dave & Buster's. I'm Dave and I'm Buster's, sad. it's been a long time. I went to, shit, when was the last one I went? Was I in, I think I was still in high school. I'm not even actually sure we got to actually play anything at the Dave and Buster's. I think we just got food, which I felt was strange. <laughs> Hoist with food and arcade games and you only got food? Right. The fuck is wrong with you? I, well, I don't think I had any controller. I feel like, I feel like uh, both times I've been to Dave and Buster's, it was for like some sort of field trip thing. Uh, so I didn't really get control over what was going on. Maybe I did get to play that. I still think my best arcade experience, though, was going to Kosai, which is in Columbus, Ohio, and actually is a, an amalgamation. Um, there's actually a better word for that that I can't think of right now. Um, of the words uh, Columbus and science. Co-sci. And it's just a science museum that they actually do a lot of really cool stuff. Maybe I'll rant about how awesome it is another time. But um, they have an arcade, at least they used to. And you could do lock-ins at this place where, you know, you did kind of a camp in the facility with, you know, elementary to high school level kids, and mm -hmm. you did a sleepover in the building and could use the building all through the night for the most part. And it was good times. But um, so we used the arcade, and the way it worked is you got these little ID cards for everybody, and they had time on them for um, 120 minutes, two hours. And the idea was you swiped your card at a game, and rather than spending money, it just started your time clock, and at the end of your two hours, your card didn't work anymore, and you were done with the arcade. But okay, why the um, fuck don't we have that? I don't know. God damn it. I mean, some places do. It's pretty awesome. Oh but God, um, you got to remember that when I went and we did this, 
Uh, I was with a group, group called GAINS, which was an acronym for something, um, but it was basically our gifted uh, program at, at the elementary level. So you were one of the smart kids in elementary school, and um, more about that on another time. I should really be taking notes on this shit that I should be talking about later. This is good shit. Yes, Shro reminisces that. about his past life, basically. Um but the point is, is we were we were not dumb kids. It didn't take long for us to realize that there's an, another machine in this room called Mr. Freeze. And yes, it looked like the, uh, the superhero. Huh. The point of Mr. Freeze was to freeze your time card when you weren't playing games or if you had to like go to the bathroom or wanted to go to another event in the facility cuz this facility did or this part of the facility did run during normal hours and when normal events were going on so if you know you wanted to go to the crazy laser demonstration or something then you could stop your time and go do that and then come back later and spend the rest of your card and all you had to do was swipe your card at Mr. Freeze to freeze time put two and two together, and we realized that our 30, 40-something kid group could team up, and we could go play a game, swipe the card, give it to one of our friends, and they could go run off to Mr. Freeze and freeze the card, only spending about a minute. We had <laughs> infinite time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Needless to say, if the arcade still exists, I know Mr. Freeze does not, because we got emailed later in following years that because of us, that system had been removed and revamped. <laughs> we broke it. So, yeah. Sounds like Speaking fun, of modding things on arcades, <laughs> this is how you break the system in real life. <laughs> and speaking of arcades and kids, like pizza places oh god yes we're going there um, i don't want to don't do it don't touch me there I re it's gonna it's not gonna be very long and it won't hurt okay that's what he said when he put me in the van <laughs> but did it hurt while you were in the van okay no i let's don't know not but it was really question. long <laughs> <laughs> uh five nights at freddy's sister location is out and for those that don't know, Five Nights at Freddy's is a series of horror games that plays a bit like a tower defense game, where you defend against the thing that's coming to your face. Except in this game, you can't really defend against the tower, the thing that's coming to the tower. It's more like you're the thing going to the tower. So they're trying to defend the place against you, in a way, I think. I hope that makes sense. It's like inverted tower defense, where you're the enemy and they're the tower, and they try to stop you from going. So wait, are you playing as one of the creepy robot guys? No, you're playing as a human, and the robots are the tower defense people. Interesting. I get that's the only way I can describe it, without having to like show gameplay. I never got into the Five Nights at Freddy's thing, so I don't I, know. I'm. Not I watch YouTubers play it. I don't. I don't really want to play it anymore. <laughs> I played. I played a bit of one, and then I like can't get past night two. I'm. I'm stuck. I'm not even gonna play anymore. But at the time, it was interesting, and even in sister honestly, location is pretty interesting. But sorry, you. Oh no! I was just. I think my problem with it was that I'm like, oh hey, this is a cool game. Wow, there's a second one out already. Oh, and they're about to release... Okay, yeah, no. Yeah. No, we're done already. Yeah. Stop it. You consider, though, but, it's I mean, a hey, very short But I mean, to you, Mr. Programmer Man, that apparently you never sleep and you have a cocaine problem. You should see a doctor about that, because Jesus Christ, man. It's actually not a very long game. If you know what you're doing, It's like it takes like an hour to beat any of the Five Nights right, at Freddy's games. So, pumping them out after about a year or so apart, that kind of makes sense. But yeah, it it's a bit much. Yeah, this is why that installment I, I think five. The, the following, like it garnered a cult following for everything, and oh, yeah. I'm that confused me. 
Well, there was a whole, like, underlying lore behind it, and I still follow well, that I think... to a degree, but I'm a little disappointed in right. sister locations, because it's like, now things are talking to you, and the lore is kind of just handed to you, I think, instead of, like, piecing things together. Mm. Which was part of the fun of at least the first two games. Maybe the first three. No one figured out what happened in four yet. But that's uh, that's another story. Mm. It's like game theory couldn't get anything right for that one. Oh my. Anyway, moving on. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? I don't know, I feel dead inside now. Okay. Speaking of dead inside, what's this Red Dead online thing you were talking about <laughs> in your thing? Yeah, uh, me and my notes, I should probably stop making them cryptic. Yeah, a little bit. Well, as I'm looking... Um, again, I was on Reddit looking for some information because it's a cheap and easy way to find information that is probably not sourced. Um, but no, everybody is freaking out. Like every fi fifth post um, is apparently there's a leak going on right now uh, that Red Dead Redemption is... Isn't there already a sequel? I don't know. A new Red Dead game is pretty much on its way to being leaked. At least that's what the uh, rumor mill is pretty convinced about. One such rumor even hints at the idea that it might be online-based somehow. Really don't know how that'll work in Red Dead universe, but maybe. You know, maybe a Western MMO? Yeah, well, that'd be a little weird. Be. Or maybe like well, that's uh, kind of what I'm thinking. I'm like, it would have to be a Western MMO thing, but Red Dead was kind of about getting you into a certain headspace, so I'm not sure how well an MMO would work. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe but, it could uh, be like uh, how GTA Online works, where you make a character and then just go out into this world that's already like pre-rendered and all that. So not really an MMO, but more like making an OC to explore the world, aside from the story mode. I guess, maybe. So yeah, that keep your eyes peeled for that. Could be some interesting Red Dead Redemption news by next week. And speaking of launches, uh, don't have much information on it, but Civilization VI just launched. Um, it's got a pretty damn spiffy trailer to it. Looks really good. Um, but yeah, it just came out, and I don't know much about it, um, because nobody really does at the moment. Um, I don't know if I'm going to grab it. I actually grabbed Civ 5 and I have like a bootleg of Civ 3 or 2 or something. I don't even remember. I'm actually not sure I have that file anymore. I don't know. I, I do love me a good RTS, but Civ has always confused me because there's enough reality mixed with this is a game that it kind of confuses. It. Like, it's the problem I have with games that our RTSs and try to be historical at the same time because there's something about Gandhi being a nuclear powerhouse <laughs> that just throws me off. I just can't do it. Um, Rebel no peace or I shall wreck it shit. Yeah. Um, the, the, I think the other problem is that um, while there's multiple ways to quote win the game um the fact that you can have civilizations that are millennia in technology apart from each other is also seriously fourth wall breaking. Like, when my Chinook full of battle armored, you know, modern combat gear troops goes and lands in a country that is being defended by night cavalry from a millennia ago or or even better like a, a a roman phalanx or something like this this is not okay <laughs> that's a technology embargo or an information embargo so make friends with those people show them the world oh boy the discord is getting interesting by the way, this is our uh, podcast reminder that we have a Discord. Go to insomniacs-anonymous.com and go find the join link on the news page. Or you can just go to the description and find the actual link, because it's not insomniacs.anonymous, but whatever. I said dash. I heard dot. Anyway, it's in the description, and so is the Discord link. You can click those <sighs> and then be taken to place.
places. Um, no, nah, just place. Like, like, um, like New York Run Lightsaber Academy. Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's a terrible. It's really segue. bad segue. <laughs> Really it's bad. It's so segue, bad. Yeah. It's a segue that doesn't actually have two wheels. Wait a minute. Uh, it's a unisegue. Bad jokes about segues. <laughs> segues. I've got. Well, that was the only one I had. So anyway. Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, Lucasfilm Anyways. is <laughs> suing a New York run stage fighting academy called the Lights. <sighs> Excuse me. Anyway. That's a really difficult to pronounce name. Yeah. And kind of a mouthful. Lucasfilm is suing New York Run Lightsaber Academy, which is a stage fighting uh, school, I guess, for using their likenesses and images and stuff. Sorry, what? No, I was going to say that uh, makes a lot more sense than me thinking it was actually just like a pretend to be a Jedi for a day kind of thing for kids back oh, yeah, to like no, no, no. the arcade idea that it was you know, we hand kids a costume and uh, a you know beatable lightsaber and tell them to go have fun yay oh no That's this it. is actually like a real thing like they have prop lightsabers that you can actually fight with and then you fight with them and then you get good and then you learn stage fighting or stage yeah, I was going to say, learning stage fighting would be a lot more interesting. Yeah. I've done a little bit of that in my theater days, but it, yeah. I have not, but it seems like a lot of fun and might help a lot in LARPing. The only one I really rem- remember, only because it was so blatantly bad, was one of the ways you can slap somebody and make it noticeable, or like make it look real, is to sneak your hand up by your face and they slap your hand and study your face, and then you just recoil to it. Yeah. Um, but this only works if the audience can't... Ooh, <laughs> that, yeah, my turn to sneeze. Yeah, if they can't see your hand. Um, yeah, if you can't see your hand. And then when they... I ended up, like... It was when we had actors visiting our school when I was in, like, middle school. And so uh, when they, they did this, I ended up getting volunteered to be the person holding their hand up. And the way the room was set up, there really was no way to hide it. And so we did the little fake scene thing of me trying to get slapped by somebody doing this. And it was really anticlimactic because like half the room could see my hand. And so, of course, then my my lovely because I was very much the, the nerd low totem pole kid. Uh, especially in middle school. And so, like, half the room proceeded to tell me as we were leaving, like, I could see your fucking hand, bro. Wasn't that special? I'm like, I, I, I know that. I, <laughs> nothing I could really do there. I, was, I did what I was told. <laughs> so, and then I got the college theater and uh, actual drama theater in uh, high school where I did, I did mostly the tech crew stuff. And they throw all that shit to the wind and say, no, you're just getting fucking slapped, dude. Suck it up like a man. <laughs> then the only real concern was to make sure that the microphone wasn't on the side of the face that was going to be hit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like peaking hell. Yeah. It would happen in rehearsal and I think a couple times in the actual show. Uh, and hey, tech crew, if you know it's coming up and going to happen... One of the things you do, you smack the level bar down for half a second as it happens and then bring it back up and the audience doesn't know. <laughs> That's one Tech way to do it. Tech crew is a lot more fun, I think. Sounds I mean, good. acting is, is fun and I actually had a lot of people in the various drama troops tell me I should be in front of the stage rather than, well, on the stage rather than in front of it. A few people tell me to be behind it too because there's really three departments in theater. <laughs> but... Not including the, the music pit. I would think that would count. Anyway, Lucasfilms yeah. is yeah. getting sued by... No, wait, no. Fuck. God damn it. Your you long-ass <laughs> story backwards. threw me off, Shro. Well, uh, you were done with it anyway. No, I wasn't. There was more to it, and you just went off on the thing. Th- tell me to shut up. I God. would, but I don't want to be that kind of person. You had... I thought you were, like, going somewhere with it. 
Am I ever going anywhere with any of my stories? Apparently not. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Lucasfilm is suing a New York-run company in fucking New York, whatever words, that does stage, that teaches stage fighting in Lightsaber Academy for using their images and likenesses and all that. And they're, like, suing for $2 million per damaging thing? That's what I'm reading this as. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, wait. That's Demanding damages and profits, intense. or up to $2 million in statutory damages for each trademark infringement, as well as permanent injunction. Um, fuck. Youch. Yeah. Apparently, this guy who ran the business uh, ignored all, like, cease and desist letters from Disney, but then again, as there ever... It's not really confirmed by anybody that there was, other than Disney. So... Interesting. Maybe they are telling the truth, maybe not. I don't know. But maybe that I should seems... be selling more of my Disney stock. You have Disney stock? I have a decent amount of Disney stock, yeah. Yeah, maybe you should sell that. If it My goes grandfather up gave it to me when I was born, and it happened hmm. to divide itself into more Disney stock, so... Huh, nice. Anyway, that's yeah. about it, unless you had, like, something to... No, let's not let me run off it. on a tangent about theater anymore. Okay. I meant, like, about the suing and all that. I'm not a legal expert. But Maybe yeah, it sounds it. like they've done a bad. Yeah. I mean, it is within Disney's rights to demand somebody to stop that. And the worth, the best. Yeah, I would say I have no idea how much of it is actually in trouble. Um, it sounds like just the name, but. The name and their logo, definitely. But Got I would it. say, like, just rebrand. It's not hard, and people will probably figure it out eventually. Right. Well, I, I bet a lot of their early business came from people stumbling over it by accident because of the name. But, yeah, I, I don't know. And especially, I mean, if you're going to rebrand at this point, if somebody's already suing you for damages, you can't just go, oh, well, you were serious. Never mind. I'll change it now. It's like, no, you're you're already yeah, you're in fucked. trouble. <laughs> you could have rebranded a lot earlier and then saved yourself the trouble. Yeah, or are they demanding you, you stop everything ever? From like even the stage fighting, yeah, all that. The uh, saving grace there would only be if he can actually somehow prove that he never got cease and desist orders, and that this is coming out of nowhere. But that's probably unlikely because those things don't just you know get lost. Yeah, anyway, that's about it for that one. What the hell is an adventure quest? I don't even know. Adventure quest was a flash game. Made by Artix Entertainment, where it was basically a turn-based RPG where you made a hero and you went off and did adventure stuff. Literally. Like, that that's quite literally the best description I could make up for this game. You, It's a bunt load of references and other shit from other games. Leroy Jenkins makes an appearance in this game as well. But... They've recently just stepped out of the Flash game scene and are trying to make a 3D MMO for literally fucking every platform ever, apparently. I got It's currently in closed beta, but it should be in open beta sometime later today as of this recording. Uh, I played a little bit of the closed beta. I'm, I gotta say, I'm not that impressed yet, only because there was music for only one area. There's no sound effects, and the customization Ooh. is very, very limited, but I'm sure someone will get something out of it. Maybe someone is young enough to remember Adventure Quest, or young enough to be curious about MMOs to look up Adventure Quest. But, eh, I think the demo, I think the beta could have used more sound effects, and I hope the open beta has more, because I haven't played that yet. Fully sound recording for the win. Yeah, like, why would you not... <laughs> Why would you have a closed beta without that? Or is it a bug? Eh, I don't know. I'm not the developer. Well, I hope they're listening then, and that they watch a video that I'm going to make of it later on in the week. Hint, hint, wink, wink, Fair nudge, enough. nudge. Hint, hint. S slap, slap, punch, knockdown, trip. Kick in the dog. <laughs> Kick in oh the my. dog. Oh. Yes.
I actually was really polish. impressed with uh, one of the students at my alma mater, Muskingum. Uh, I was there for a weekend about a month ago. Um, and we were in the radio studio area, which is, again, somewhere I used to be. And this guy was recording, and he was actually trying... He was having a problem with the computer, and I tried to help him out along with my buddy. Um, and he got it figured out. But um, he was actually recording stuff because he was trying to get into Foley and, like, make that, like, his focus for his degree in communications and stuff. And I'm like, holy shit, that's, like, really cool. Because you don't see too many people that even know that word, let alone that, it, you know, you could be a field for it. I don't know how well that would work as an actual career choice. I don't know how many times you can find a Foley uh, technician or something like that as a jobs listing, but it's also certainly not something you really hear people like, I want to do this, so like, more power to you, man. He was uh, trying to record the sound of a baseball bat cracking. So, and he had like two erasers that he was hitting a specific way together on their backs up in front of the microphone, so you got this like really sharp crack noise. Huh. I never even thought of that. Sounds like a so, sound engineer, though. It's basically Foley and sound engineer are in some cases uh, interchangeable. So, for a lot of video games and whatnot, you you can you know the sound engineer. One of the sound engineers might be the guy mixing all of the sound effects together for certain parts of a game or whatever, while like two other guys are off in a room with a shotgun microphone held up to like a plant that they're scraping against a wall for some strange reason as a sound effect or you know all sorts of strangeness like watching people do fully i find incredibly entertaining because you sit there and you're like oh this is the sound effect for that and then you watch them do what they're actually doing with what they're actually using and it's like yep never would have guessed that <laughs> Never in a million years. I watched um, some Foley thing go on. It was actually, I think it was like a Disney thing. Uh, back when you could watch like the Disney Channel and they had all those like weird little just behind the scenes interviews and shit like with all the kids and the kids shows and the teenager shows or whatever. And I, I think it was for an upcoming Pixar movie. I almost want to say it was Toy Story 3, but they had one of their, like, recurring kid actors, like, go in for an interview or something with one of the Foley experts. And so the guy spent, like, four minutes teaching him about Foley, and then they did some of the sound effects, like, in real time. So they were grabbing different props, doing the effect, and then moving to a different prop and doing, like, one after the other. And I'm like, do you really record these all in like shotgun style like this? Or, like I thought they were recorded one sound effect at a time. Like that's insane. So I don't know different ways to do it, but you didn't tell me to shut up again. No, because I am genuinely interested in the background, like production stuff. So fair enough. Maybe someone else is and could learn a thing. Anyway, well, uh, I don't have any great trade secrets on that one. So eh. Sorry. Anyway, how have you, what have you been up to in Guild Wars? Um, kind of hating my existence. <laughs> oh, have you been playing PvP? No, actually not. Um, I mean, I did a few times, and the group I was with actually most recently, we did really, really well. We won, like, all but one or two of, like, seven or eight games. So, we were kicking ass. But, kind of hitting the realization that I, you know, intended the re remember the reason I wanted to stay invisible and continue to hide for a while was so that I could learn all the new weird shit and what was going on. And then I decided, um, fuck that, I'll just play. Well, that's coming back to haunt me now because now I'm hitting the point where like, I, like I'm doing fine in PVE other than the fact that I have no idea what any of the meta events, the gear, the, you know, new traits and, quests and goals and all that any of that is i have no idea what i'm doing there um but you know just playing the game i can do that but 
when it comes to the world versus world and uh, player versus player stuff, it's uh, I don't know what other people are doing anymore. I don't know what metas are. I don't know what people are running. I don't even know what a lot of skills are that are happening. Um, like the, the some of the big ones that come to mind are like a lot of the chronomancer skills. Don't understand them. I'm like that's a skill that a mesmer couldn't do back when I played the game. No idea what it's doing now. <laughs> you can always like, like look that's up a the different sound effect and a different animation. Don't know what it accomplished. You can always look it up. I'm sure there's something that'll tell you. Oh, and I am. That's kind of what I'm doing. But that's also where I'm at right now. Is I, I'm kind of rather than playing the game, I'm reading a lot about it. Um, and just going through catalogs of information. Like, I finally actually tried my Berserker Elite Specialization last night in World vs. World. Don't know how to make it work. I could get all of the Adrenaline Bar up so that I could activate the uh, Elite Specialization, and then it promptly disappeared. Like, I could get one attack off, and then it was gone. I'm like, well, I'm doing something wrong, clearly, because... <laughs> The, the uh, attacks in that mode of use are already not super great. It's the idea of using them together in chain that's supposed to be cool. And I can't get the chain to go, so... Yeah. Whoops. Shro's doing a dumb and he doesn't even know what it is. So yeah, right now I'm kind of in that part of like, I don't know what to do in, to make stuff work. And so I'm just doing research to try and learn. Like, I want to command again, too, but... And I, I'm knowing a decent enough that I could at least, you know, guide a K-train around. But I'm like, you know, I'm also really fucking squishy right now, and my normal attack combos just aren't holding up like they used to. So, yeah, I don't know. Just got to relearn things. That's where I'm at. So pondering my existence at the moment. Do let me next. Do let me know next time you're we're doing a rally because I don't know when. I don't know when our guilds are rallying. Yeah, in World I, I World. got out of um, of Teamspeak last night real late because uh, somebody decided they wanted to show us guild halls. That's another thing I completely don't understand. Oh, like, yeah. I got to the guild halls and I'm like, what? Yeah, I has um, that too. So. Um, yeah, I think I've been in the IA Guild Hall once, <laughs> which I feel like is kind of a sin considering I'm supposed to be the leader. Yeah. But, um, I think I've been in every guild that I'm part of hall only once. So that's not like a major Josh at anybody. It's just like, I have no idea what I'm doing. One guild hall I was actually only in long enough to use a portal and I couldn't find the portal. So I had like five people in TeamSpeak like trying to guide me around this guild hall without actually seeing where I am to get to the specific object in it. I'm like, where am I going? Are you in the golden looking one or the sandy one? It was one? one of the gilded hollow ones, yeah. The oh, gilded, gilded one, hollow? Which I'm that actually is... not terribly fond of. I really like Lost Precipice a lot more. And I was actually in Lost Precipice last night. Both of the guild halls that I was shown to last night was uh, Lost Precipice. So I was actually the, the dissenting, one of the strong dissenting votes when everybody voted for what the uh, new guild hall should be. Uh, even though I wasn't even in game and couldn't even play Heart of Thorns at that point, uh, I'd looked at both of them and heard enough reviews that I'm like, I really think I like Lost Precipice more. And that's what I voted for, but nobody else wanted it. So I think we can now that I've switch it, but we have to do the quest again. Yeah, I've heard that you can do it again, and I don't know if there are major consequences to that. But I mean, I also pretty lost squarely. I think there was one other person that voted for Lost Precipice, and then the rest of IA was Gilded Hollow. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that I'm just gonna have to deal with you know, playing around in Lost Precipice with other guilds when I feel yeah. like playing around in Lost Precipice. I like the verticality of it. It really lets you play with um, your your glider, and it's a lot... I feel like it's more open since there's a sky. And while I love underground, crazy, large nonsense, 
in Gilded Hollow, I kind of feel like I'm in some twisted Mayan version of, you know, uh, what is the name of that book? Under I don't know. Oh, there's that too. No, the Jules Verne book. I don't know. Journey to the Center of the Earth? Earth? Maybe? I still have to yeah, read that Yeah, that one. is it. Um, like they have that on Kindle. I haven't read it yet. Fuck. I gotta start reading yeah, books. Yeah, okay, that is the, the, the book I'm thinking of. I was trying... I kept combining it in my head with 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, so it was like 20,000 <laughs> kilometers under the Earth, or like Leagues 20, Under the Earth. 20,000 Leagues Under the Earth. 20,000 Leagues to the Center of the Earth. Yeah. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, though, I should whip out that measurement. Is that even a feasible measurement? Probably not, How many but... Leagues, eh. How many leagues is the Earth? I feel like it's less than 20,000 from one end to the other of that sphere. Who knows? Anyway, let's just check your local library thing. So, we've gushed a lot about games that aren't video games lately larps board games trading card games etc um which speaking of trading card games we should drag buff in here for a uh, um magic day jag too i think uh could we could have a lot of magic the gathering discussion i think it would also probably make anybody that doesn't know magic the gathering like have their brain just ooze out of their nose but like me because i still i've unlearned a lot of things from magic unlearned unlearned i don't okay. remember what how to play anymore i mean i remember how to play but i don't remember like any of the cards i still tap don't your remember. lands dude tap your land i would but they're not that hot tap it hard i can't they're not sexy enough that's your problem not mine i'm gonna tap my lands well okay you do that they're gonna put out I don't care what how sexy they are. Well, mine don't, out. so there's that. My lands are whores. My lands are sensible men who don't need no woman. Oh my. Anywho. But um no, anyways, the point of the library thing is I discovered that my local library A was trying a trading card game day, which I actually had to be out of town for and I was kinda sad about, but I guess they did pretty good with it. Um with the exception of the uh, staff member I was talking to mentioned that, yeah, we had a good turnout for it, but surprisingly, there was zero Magic players. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Because that's what I would have brought had I not been out of town that day. That would the only one. A con, which would probably get me expelled from, <laughs> from the library. You would have brought in what? Ferroticon. That sounds like a furry thing with a lot of porn. Or maybe it a little is bit of porn. a furry oh. thing with it. Yeah, it's actually a furry trading card game that is X-rated. Oh, yeah, but, uh, don't bring that to a library. Yeah, but um, Bring it to our house. What actually amused me is, so I, I picked it up, I've known about Ferroticon for years. It's been around, so I think actually 10 years, they were saying me. They were celebrating like their 10 year or something. So that surprised me, because I only thought it had been a few years. Um, and I've looked at their... Shit, hold on. I'm actually going to try and focus myself. Point of the library discussion is my local library was having a trading card game day. I missed it, but unfortunately, uh, it, it, I mean, fortunately, um, they are going to be doing more of those. But more importantly, they have a monthly uh, just general game day where it's basically anything but video games from chess to trading cards to board games. Um, well, I guess they don't actually do many LARPs. That's a different thing. But um, So, yeah, once a month they have something. And this is kind of a thing with libraries. So if you were, you know, listening to us previously going, I'd love to go on a LARP or a murder mystery or just have some friends to play my card games with or, you know, my board game collection or just somebody that I don't have to play myself in chess. Um, go to your local library and ask them because libraries are putting out a lot of that kind of cool meet and greet stuff and hang out things these days. And if you're not finding such a thing at your local library, start one. It's not hard. So yeah, 
Go check it out, do the stuff, have some fun. That's the point I'm trying to make here. Yay. And you stayed focused for about two minutes, I think. Maybe. I have After to look I at deviated the time. for like right. five minutes. Yeah. But yeah, yeah anyways, for I I've been off and on about um, for a long time because A, I've it's normally something you have to order online because no store is going to carry this in their right mind. Um, Except for a erotica store, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but most likely not. But uh, it, it's kind of cheesy the way the uh, naughtiness mechanic is worked into it. And so I've kind of like, eh, on the whole thing. Well, they uh, they showed up at Origins this year with a double wide booth. So it was kind of hard to miss. And so that's how I started talking to them and playing with stuff. And it turns out they had a demo and a tournament. A tournament that I actually did really well in until I had to leave to go to another event. Had I not bowed out of it, there was a decent chance that I might have made it to the finals. Because trading card games have what they call um, booster pack tournaments is one slang term for them. Where you pay an entry fee to the, the tournament. And then you're just told to draw an X amount of booster packs um, from a box they have. And that number of booster packs will give you an excess of the deck size. And you normally play with like a shortened deck size of like 20 cards or something. Mm. And you then put together a deck with all the cards that you drew out of your booster packs and you set the rest of them aside, and then you take that deck to the tournament. Or rather, you're already at the tournament, and you start the tournament. And so, yeah. the yeah. yeah. The idea is to see, A, if there's an RNG factor to it. You might get something good, you might not. Um, B, how well can you make work what you get? So, that was a lot of fun, considering I'd never played the game before, and I beat, like, two people. You know how... Uh... Wasn't it how wasn't it magic booster tournaments where you make a deck in a group of people and you just kinda like hand out the next hand out like a handful of cards and then you just like take one for your deck? Isn't that um how, I wouldn't uh, be surprised. Magic's pretty much come up with every way known to man to have games and tournaments. I thought that's how booster attorneys work anyway. Like, I mean, there's more than one way to do it. But yeah, you could do it that way. I don't see why not. Okay, then I learned a new way to make that work. Anyway, we're running a bit short on time, so maybe we can burn through the next couple topics. Yeah, um, I'll make a public service announcement that I'm trying to do some forum cleanup stuff, um, partially because I want to, um, and unfortunately I know our forum moderator has got a lot of real love stuff real life stuff going on and that's fine i'm you know not josh and honor or anything but i figured it'd be nice to kind of do something for a little bit where people can actually see some progress being made as one of the major points of the website is the use of the forums and um a lot of the stuff i've been working on nobody can really actually see it so yeah something to something that people can see and chew on but uh, what it means is basically some things are getting moved around, some things are getting archived. I'm probably going to remove a few forums is the technical word, but some of the like heading categories, like the on stuff, just uh, like the what is one like the forum games subcategory is kind of weird, doesn't really get used, and it's ambiguous. So stuff like that, I'm going to just make it a little easier to figure out where things should be posted by not having a bajillion different options. So, But there will be a change log for all of that, uh, which is actually one of the reasons it takes so long for me to do it. Is It's like, okay, I want to do this thing. It'll take me five seconds to do that. It'll take me about a minute and a half to actually copy-paste the URLs, write them into the change log, and make sure all of the formatting works so that it's readable and then move on to the next one <laughs> but yeah i don't know when i'll be finished with that but it's a thing going on so if you can't find something come find me i'll tell you where it is 
there's nothing actually being deleted except for form categories and those aren't going to be deleted until everything that's in them is gone somewhere else so no actual content is being removed it's just being reorganized all right then you want to tell me about a man named rump uh i think it's self-explanatory who who he is or who he's supposed to be but there's a game on steam now called mr president it came out just recently it's a physics engine kind of game where you have to save a presidential candidate named Ronald Rump in in uh, the game, hint, hint, uh, from taking a bullet or just dying in general. He's just kind of like having his speech. He's waving to the crowds. There's money falling from the sky behind him. And he's about to get shot and you have to dive into a bullet and save him. Or just tackle him, like if you really want to do that. It depends you on what the level. Physics games. Yeah, it's like. Uh, have you ever played Goat Simulator? I actually have it, but I haven't played it. Oh my god, go do that right now. <laughs> I know, right? It's terrible. Do that right the fuck now. Like install that now and play it after I'm not the even podcast. Sure. Do I have it installed? I might have it installed already. All right, physics. I meant like physics sandbox kind of game where you are basically you can become a rag doll at pretty much any point in time, or if you get hit. But the well, I watch you to... on your channel play all these crazy. No, I actually don't have it installed. Yeah, you um, might want to do that. Then. <laughs> I I watch you play all of these physics games, and two things happen. Sometimes you piss yourself off. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I have yep. the hiccups now. And then there are other times where you're not angry. Nothing's bad going on, but just watching the physics thing happen. And how the game functions just pisses me off. Like, I can't do physics games for a long amount of time, uh, especially the puzzly ones, in the sense that you have them if the, like... There's a solution to whatever thing, and you have to figure right, it out, like, or just like get to portal, it. Like, portal kind of physics thing, Half-Life 2 physics, that, that doesn't bother me. Yeah. But the, like, I am a ragdoll flopping around the planet kind of thing... Yeah. This, yeah, that's... something about it just gets under my skin. I can't handle it. Like it is painful for me to watch some of your videos. I'm like, I, I'm like rocking in the back of my chair. By the end, I'm like, I can't do it. Like I can't do it. Mm -hmm. it's just, why are you doing this to yourself? Because it, and, it is funny to just watch someone flop around like that, though. I don't know. It's Not hard for me, as fuck man. To, like. like it's hard as hell to operate that and play it in a game, but it's like, just... I'm to the point of committing seppuku a few times. It brings in some silly results sometimes, and it's really funny when it True. does. Other than that, it's just ragey, and that's why I don't play Human Fall Flat anymore, because I'm stuck. Oh, are you? Yeah. That was actually one of the ones that would make me cringe a lot. There's like one part in the castle and I don't know where to go and I'm not getting any kind of hints and I could somehow like grab hold of the walls of this castle to like move around and stuff but I don't know that's the right way to do it and you die you end up at the back of the stage and then fuck all happens and yeah I'm, I'm stuck in short. So that's not. I happening. feel like that entire game is defined as you are a Velcro slinky. Pretty much, yeah. But anyway, Mr. President, Good it's five dollars on games. Steam. If you want to play it, go ahead. I will try to get it when I can and maybe play it for YouTube. But in the meantime, I don't know if we have enough time to read all of part two of Old Man Henderson. Do we want? Yeah, to try? I was going to say I think we can. Uh, we can split Old Man Henderson in half. Um, okay. There's not a great break in the middle of part two, but there is enough of it that it's kind of evenly split in half, and there's still a chunk of time. Let me see if real quick I can find... Yeah, let's just... uh. No, I don't want to stop there. Let's speak out loud. Oh, there's a good spot. All right. So... Quick reminder, this is from a different player's perspective in the party of Old Man Henderson's 
very touching campaign. And Old Man Henderson is a game-breaking character with a backstory of doom, as it is literally called, that allows him to basically retcon and come up with whatever crazy game-breaking bullshit he can to try and thwart their uh, maniacal GM's attempts to ruin a fun time. And uh, the stories that we've previously been told were from the player of Old Man Henderson, but in highlights wheel mode. These stories are with all the gory details, and I think they're better for it. So here we go, Director's Cut Part 2. Remember that I'm reading from the player of a different character, not Old Man Henderson. So when I ended the last story, we had a dead Shoggoth, a burning building, a bunch of MIA lawn gnomes, and we totally just ordered some bitching Chinese food. Anyway, at this point in the proceedings, Henderson decided that if we, he couldn't get a proper brainstorming going at home as to the location of the gnomes, then he could always try Harry's bar. Good old Harry was scared proper shitless of Henderson after an incident with a commie bastard pinball machine prior to the game's start, so he could drink in peace and nobody really bothered him about the mounting tab. So he's sitting there working on a new plan of action with his two best friends, Mr. Daniels and Mr. Walker, when suddenly a news report comes on. Apparently, some woman was commenting on how the quiet religious group a few blocks away from the bar just had their shit wrecked. Henderson was very interested in knowing that they were not in fact Mormons, but rather Disciples of the Yellow King, which apparently were a radical sect of Buddhism that had the details promptly ignored since there was a hockey game going on. <laughs> then Henderson had a really good idea. Since somebody at the other table had the dragnet theme as their ringtone, he knew fuck all about looking for people, but a private detective. So after a few minutes in the phone book, he decided to literally call the first name he saw under the PI heading. By sheer freakish coincidence, the phone in the detective player's office starts to ring. Hello? I need a man who's good at finding things, doesn't have any great love of religious loonies, and doesn't mind maybe shooting an ugly-ass poodle or two. I'm sorry, but who is this? Name's Henderson. I need some help from a professional. No argument here. So you're looking to hire a PI? Yep. Had some precious stole had something precious stolen from me, and that was roughly forty thousand dollars of lawn gnomes. There was a silence both in game and at the table. What? I'm not saying it was cultists, but I'm pretty sure it was cultists or aliens, but that seems unlikely given the circumstances. If you're interested, we can talk down at Harry's on the other side by the river, or on the south side by the river. And then he hung up. Since the, detec since the detective was quickly getting nowhere with his missing persons case, he decided it'd be good for a laugh. Henderson, meanwhile, had discovered that Harry had acquired a Pac-Man arcade machine and decided to fill the scoreboard with profanity. <laughs> so when the detective arrives, he asks for some guy named Henderson and was promptly pointed to a man in unusual attire who is teaching a girl how to shoot pool. Henderson? Hold on, just a second. The important part of a shot in pool is to make sure it's smooth. Take all the time you need to line up the shot. Don't let them rush you, he says, and then he sinks his last three balls and the eight in one stroke. Then he turns to the detective, who promptly recognizes him and tries to leave. Too bad for him, Henderson decided to follow. So how do you think you're going to go about this? I'm going to get the hell back in my car, and leave the crazy-ass arsonist murderer behind. No shit! He looks over his shoulder at the bar. Which one? He looks at the detective, poking him in the chest. What? The church! You burned the church down! They started it. Because you walked in with a shotgun? He asked, exasperated at the infuriatingly flawless logic of a complete asshole. <laughs> no. Because they stole my goddamn lawn gnomes. Yeah, you mentioned that. How do you fucking steal $40,000 in decorative lawn fixtures? Where the hell do you even get that many lawn gnomes? I worked briefly as a prostitute in Thailand. In 
Teak Gnome Collection was my retirement plan. What? <laughs> I ended up riding some dude's junk all the way back home. Hell of an uncomfortable ride, let me tell you. Not meant for the ocean blue, and I would know. You understand the logistics of riding another man's junk across the ocean. Well, in a general sense, I mean, I took a course on a ship building and back in college. This was before we had those fancy navigational gypsy pathfinder space fairies. Gypsy pathfinder space fairies has got the first letter of each word capitalized. I'll let you figure that one out. I, all right. You said you were looking for gnomes. Actually, that was earlier. Just now I'm explaining that I uh, knew so much about catching a ride on somebody's junk because of vigorous study in my youth. Okay, um, let's focus on the gnomes. You think they were stolen by a cult. Only thing that makes sense from what I know, I want you to look into this Disciples of the Yellow King. See if they're doing something suspicious. Actually, I was already looking into them for another reason. Looks like they've got a hand in human trafficking. Lawn Gnome seems like an odd direction to go in. But I won't deny that they're up to no good. I'll let you know if I find anything worth talking about. Sounds good. I'm usually at Harry's here, unless I'm not. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go see a man about a horse. Henderson then walked across the street, stole a bicycle, and rode off into a plot hole for a brief period of time. <laughs> <laughs> now, now there's the question, speaking out of a uh, game. Do you guys have a shit? Do you guys give a shit about non Waffle House related things? because the rest of us were trying to play a somewhat serious game at this point around him. I wanted to know if you guys wanted the whole story or just shenanigans. Several votes for the whole story later. All right, so at this point, the guy playing the detective decided to give my character an easy in with the group since poor Jimmy was still on his lonesome for the moment. In roles, James Fink, one of several characters whom Henderson has already killed, and the only one besides Simon who's never got remembered by the rest of the group, James is a longtime friend of the detective, whose name I just remembered now as Albert Johansson. Pronounced Albert Johansson for some fucking reasons. I guess I butched that one. Back when Al was still a cop, Jim was a thug for the local mob. They worked up the ladders with their respective organizations, gained the respect of their co-workers, and eventually ended up leaving their jobs on good terms with their bosses. In Jim's case, it was because his wife had a baby on the way then and asked him to find safer work. Al ended up in a shootout where his pot partner got killed, fighting against a bunch of crazy meth addicts. Shortly after quitting, they ran into each other by coincidence and discovered that the other one was the bastard who kept wrecking our job getting in the way and ended up becoming best friends. This continued on a fairly regular basis for several years until the Henderson situation and Al decided he wanted backup. Um, I'll read that again as Al decided he wanted backup because Henderson's crazy and there was nobody in the world he trusted more. So, Jim said as he walked into the office, who's the client? Some crazy motherfucker named Henderson. That is first or his last name. <laughs> That's his... Man, I have no fucking clue. Alright, so what's he want? Apparently he thinks the cult stole his antique lawn gnome collection. Um, so drop the nutter. Two good reasons not to. The cult he's accusing, I honestly believe to in be involved in both activity illegal and bizarre the other is that any man who can afford to just have 40 grand and gnomes lie around can write a paycheck why the hell would someone have 40 don't tug on this particular string jim just trust me just don't do it so what's our first lead well i was gonna go kick around the ash in the ashes of the church my new boss just burned down and then see if there were any witnesses wait our boss caused that church fire? Yeah, so you're in? You kidding? I need to see how deep this rabbit hole goes.
<laughs> cut scene. And that is the first half of Director's Cut Part 2. I need to make a mental note where we stopped. I've got it written down. I, okay. I found a good stopping point there at the end of the night. Okie dokie. So, yeah. Best bud character detectives get together to fight some crime only to have one of their fellow party members actually hire them. <laughs> and he's a fucking loon ball. <laughs> that can't go well. To be fair, this particular kind of scenario does actually happen kind of frequently in the early stages of a um, a uh, pen and Cthulhu. paper game. Uh, uh, no, this is not a betrayal game. At least it's not supposed to be. Um, Call of Cthulhu and its spinoff that they're using, Trail of Cthulhu, is really all about just... It, it's kind of a, uh, think, noir-style... Um, Trope? investigator where the um, the mystery gets revealed to have supernatural uh, origins. Yeah. That's Call of Cthulhu. So yeah, if, but... you know, you're, you know, she walked in on a yeah, breezy I, I, summer I, I, night. I think I get it. Okay. Well, okay, you asked. I said, like, Trail of Cthulhu and like, Betrayal. Okay. Anyway, I think oh. that about does it for this episode of the podcast, don't you? Probably. I was looking fine. Did we, did we croak an hour yet? Yeah, about an hour did. and 20 minutes. Oh, damn it. Those we long ass stories, man. I should have told you to shut up sooner. Yep, you should have. Should have, but then you were talking about, like, sound effect creation and then yeah i wanted to <laughs> then you just... talked about shit that i was interested in fuck foil yes. again <laughs> curses so i'll just get a list of all the things dude is interested in and then i can talk forever and ever and, and ever. then i will hate you <laughs> <laughs> welcome uh... to podcast episode 28 part 17 we're still going it's been three days i don't know where the food <laughs> is anymore <laughs> We had to break somehow sleep. developed an inability to have water and still keep talking. <laughs> That's a talent. Yeah, it is. Anyway, thank you guys for listening, and thank you, Shreya, for joining me on this... Well, I don't know how to, how this day is here, so jo thank you for joining me it's on this Tuesday. Nice. It's a little cloud cover, some nice breeze. It's uh, in the 70s, but it, there's not sun to make it, like, you know sweltering like it was this weekend where it's like hey the thermometer reads like 72 but if you're in the sun you might as well be cooking alive because holy shit that motherfucker was intense that day yeah that sounds bad and i thank you all for listening and we'll see you in the next episode which will hopefully be on a tuesday and will come out on a wednesday as opposed to my oh. track record sorry we have to actually update or upload a few of the episodes to the website oops i still have them I should have all the ones we don't have on the website yet, so I'll send them to the Dropbox. Anyway, we're getting off track. Uh, thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye! Bye! You should just anticlimactically hit that button right now.